in the vast silence of space where stars and galaxies dance in an eternal ballet orchestrated by the laws of physics, there lies a profound truth often overlooked in the daily hustle of human existence. It is a truth that, once understood, can liberate the soul from the shackles of perpetual wanting. As a child, Michael had always been captivated by the stars. He spent countless nights gazing at the sky, wondering about the universe and its mysteries. Now, as a pastor, he found himself grappling with a deeper enigma, not of celestial bodies, but of the human heart and its insatiable desires. The Nature of Wanting One Chilly autumn evening, as Michael prepared for his weekly Bible study group, he pondered the theme of his next devotional. His thoughts circled back to a question that had troubled one of his parishioners the previous week. Why doesn't the universe give us what we want? As he flipped through his well-worn Bible, Michael's eyes landed on a passage from Matthew 6.33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. This verse sparked an idea. What if, he thought, the reason we often feel unfulfilled is that we are chasing after the wrong things? The devotional begins. The church hall was filled with the soft glow of candlelight as people from various walks of life gathered, each carrying their own burdens of unmet desires and unfulfilled dreams. Michael welcomed them with a warm smile, sensing their shared quest for understanding. Tonight, Michael began, his voice calm and reassuring. We explore a topic close to many of our hearts, our desires. Why is it that sometimes, no matter how much we want something, it seems the universe is deaf to our pleas? He paused, letting the question hang in the air. In our pursuit of what we want, we often overlook what we truly need. Our desires can mislead us, trapping us in a cycle of endless wanting. The illusion revealed. To understand this, let us consider the nature of desire itself, Michael continued, walking slowly among the rows of attentive listeners. Desire promises happiness, but it often leads to a never-ending pursuit. Like mirages in a desert, the more we chase them, the further they seem to retreat. He stopped and looked around the room, making eye contact with several nodding parishioners. Consider this, he said, gesturing with a hand. If the universe gave us everything we wanted, would we really be happy, or would we simply want more? A murmur of agreement spread through the room. Jesus and the freedom from want Michael then drew a parallel to the teachings of Jesus. Jesus lived a life free from earthly desires. He taught us to seek spiritual wealth rather than material abundance. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? He let the words resonate with his audience allowing them to reflect on their own lives and the things they prioritized. True freedom, Michael concluded, comes not from having everything we want, but from wanting nothing. When we desire nothing that this world offers, we open ourselves to the divine grace that fills our hearts with true and lasting joy. Reflection and Prayer As the session drew to a close, Michael invited the group to spend a few moments in silent reflection asking them to consider what desires they might release in order to make space for more divine grace in their lives. The room fell silent, with only the flickering candles casting shadows on thoughtful faces. As they prayed, a sense of peace seemed to descend upon them all, a peace that comes from understanding a little more about the universe's profound yet simple truths. As the people slowly left the church, many approached Michael to thank him. They felt lighter, unburdened by the weight of their desires, and touched by the promise of a deeper, more fulfilling joy, as the new day dawned, bringing with it the promise of fresh insights and deeper understanding, Pastor Michael prepared for his next devotional session. Inspired by the previous evening's reflections on desire and the quest for true joy, he decided to explore the concept of detachment and how it aligns with spiritual growth. The church, bathed in the soft morning light, offered a serene backdrop for the day's lessons. Embracing Detachment Gathering his notes and a well-thumbed Bible, Michael greeted his early attendees with a serene smile. Good morning, everyone. Today we delve into a challenging yet rewarding aspect of our spiritual journey, detachment. He paused, allowing the word to settle in the minds of his listeners. 
Detachment does not mean we do not care. It means we learn to love and live without clinging to the outcomes. The Wisdom of Scripture Michael referenced the book of Philippians, emphasizing a verse that spoke powerfully about contentment. I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. These words, Michael explained, teach us that contentment does not depend on external conditions, but on our internal state. Detachment helps us achieve this state. The Parable of the Sower To illustrate his point, Michael recounted the parable of the sower, focusing on how different types of soil represented the human heart's response to spiritual truths. The seeds that fell among thorns are like those who hear the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. This, he said, glancing around the room, shows us how attachment to worldly concerns can prevent us from growing spiritually. Practical Steps Towards Detachment Wanting to offer practical advice, Michael outlined steps to cultivate detachment. Mindfulness. Be present in the moment. When you find yourself overly attached to something, take a step back and observe your thoughts without judgment. Gratitude. Practice gratitude daily. Focus on what you have, not on what you lack or desire. Generosity. Give without expecting anything in return. This helps loosen the ties of selfishness and greed. Trust. Have faith in God's plan for you. Trust that what is meant for you will not pass you by. Experiential Learning As the session neared its end, Michael invited the group to participate in a small exercise. Think of something you're attached to, he suggested. Now imagine your life without it. Reflect on how it makes you feel and what it teaches you about your attachment. The room filled with a contemplative silence as each person delved into their thoughts, confronting their attachments and the emotions they stirred. Closing in Prayer Finally, Michael brought the session to a close with a prayer, asking for strength and wisdom to practice detachment in their lives. Lord, grant us the courage to release our earthly attachments and embrace the freedom that comes with true detachment. As the parishioners left the church, many expressed feelings of relief and newfound motivation to apply these teachings. Michael watched them go, hopeful that today's lessons would plant seeds of lasting change in their hearts. The morning's lessons on detachment had left a profound impact on the congregation, and Pastor Michael sensed a growing eagerness among his parishioners to delve deeper into their spiritual practice. Inspired by this momentum, he decided the next topic would focus on the virtue of simplicity, a natural progression from detachment. Setting the Scene As the evening drew near, the church was again filled with the soft, inviting glow of candlelight. The quiet murmurs of the gathering crowd hinted at their anticipation and readiness to explore further. Michael greeted each person with a nod and a smile reinforcing the sense of community and shared purpose. Introducing Simplicity Good evening, everyone, Michael began, his voice resonating with a calm authority. Tonight we explore another key aspect of our spiritual lives, simplicity. This is not just about having less, but about being more. It's about clearing our lives of excess and focusing on what truly matters. Biblical Foundations Michael referred to Matthew 6, 19, 21, where Jesus advises, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This passage, Michael explained, is a call to prioritize our spiritual wealth over material accumulation. It invites us to live lives marked by simplicity. The example of Christ Michael highlighted how Jesus exemplified simplicity in his own life. Jesus was born in a manger, had no place to lay his head, and focused his ministry on teaching, healing, and serving others. His life was simple yet full of purpose, 
showing us that our value does not come from possessions, but from our relationship with God and others. Practical Steps Toward Living Simply To help his listeners put these concepts into action, Michael offered some practical steps. Evaluate your needs. Consider what you truly need versus what you want. Focus on essentials and let go of unnecessary possessions. Simplify your environment. Organize your living and working spaces. A clutter-free environment can lead to a clearer mind and a more focused spirit. Reduce consumption. Think before you buy. Ask yourself if this purchase is necessary and what its impact is on your spiritual and environmental footprint. Cultivate inner peace. Spend more time in prayer and meditation. Simplicity in your external life starts with simplicity in your internal life. Reflection and Sharing Following his talk, Michael invited the group to share their thoughts on simplicity and discuss areas in their lives where they could implement these changes. The sharing session was heartfelt and genuine, with many expressing a desire to reassess their lifestyles and priorities. Closing in Prayer As the night came to a close, Michael led the congregation in prayer, asking for guidance in their pursuit of a simpler, more purposeful life. Heavenly Father, help us to strip away the unnecessary so we may better see your will for us and walk more faithfully in your way. As the parishioners left, there was a palpable sense of commitment in the air, commitment to a simpler way of living that could deepen their faith and bring them closer to the divine.